Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, the art of yearning. There's an old saying, we covet what we see every day. But what about the things we yearn for that we've never met or experienced? Do we have a yearning for the undiscovered? Where does yearning come from? And can it ever be satisfied? Historically, yearning is defined as a nostalgic memory. The Freudian concept concludes longing is actually a disremembering of what was an idealized screen state. When things were perfect and protected, and a return to home was not only desired, but guaranteed. Definition in Context When I'm wondering about something, I tend to look to literature and a non-nostalgic past for what people, my cohorts, and in the case of yearning, what my genius ancestors from Nebraska before me thought about this notion of yearning. Lauren Isley, L-O-R-E-N-E-I-S-L-E-Y, a good and now unfortunately dead son of Nebraska, was a genius author and a teacher of minds all over the country. And in his book, The Unexpected Universe, he said this, Odysseus's passage through the haunted waters of the eastern Mediterranean symbolizes, at the start of the Western intellectual tradition, the sufferings that the universe and his own nature impose upon the homeward yearning man. Now that, I argue, is a classical Freudian definition of yearning. Then, in that vast sleeping, Isley returned to the theme of yearning and wrote this. Yes, I try to penetrate the future. Only man thinks of it, if he does but so does also that vast thing sleeping in the swamps of time. I am his child. Think that my thoughts must run in similar directions. Lately we have conceived pity and hope. Take this as a sign infused into our yearning flesh by that old sleeper, deep in the Carboniferous, now awake and tired of what he dreamed before. We are his shape and non-shape. He dreams in us and reaches, heavily we sigh. If we must dream for him, mark that we should dream well. Isley reveals we are not alone. We are not ourselves. He warns us we are inside and outside something greater than our mere internal yearnings. Now let's turn to Willa Cather, one of my favorite authors. You can go to bowls.com right now Click on the script section, look for Carving Cather. It's a play I wrote, one woman show, all in her own words. So in The Song of the Lark, good daughter of Nebraska, Willa Cather, wrote this. Along with the yearning that came from some deep part of her, that was selfless and exalted, Thea had a hard kind of cockiness, a determination to get ahead. 
Well, there are passages in life when that fierce, stubborn self-assertion will stand its ground after the nobler feeling is overwhelmed and beaten under. So there, in Song of the Lark, Willa Cather comes apart at us, binding yearning to cockiness and a false sense of self-knowing nobilism. In her most famous book, O Pioneers, Willa Cather beautifully sets yearning in stone and carves definition. When the road began to climb the first long swells of the divide, Alexandra hummed an old Swedish hymn, and Emil wondered why his sister looked so happy. Her face was so radiant that he felt shy about asking her. For the first time, perhaps, since that land emerged from the waters of geologic ages, a human face was set toward it with love and yearning. It seemed beautiful to her, rich and strong and glorious. Her eyes drank in the breadth of it until her tears blinded her. Then the genius of the divide, the great free spirit which breathes across it, must have bent lower than it ever bent to a human will before. The history of every country begins in the heart of a man or a woman. So there, in Cather's world, there is a larger turning into the future by investigating the methods of yearning sent against the covenants of the past. Finally, we turn to the great John G. Nyhart, poet laureate of the state of Nebraska. And he was given that title in 1921 by an act of the Nebraska State Legislature. He was poet laureate then and now and into the future. Into perpetuity is how the act reads. Is that right? Is that proper? Do we always live in the past? Yes, John Nyhart wrote, Black Elk Speaks. But to dissolve the history of Nebraska into a single man's poetry and writing, believing then and now that no other human being born in the flatlands could ever match John Nyhart's fears or talents, is disappointing and shows no cause for hope or future when trembling and uncertainty of the present is preserved in amber in 1921. Yes, we have Nebraska state poets now, elected to a measly five-year term. But I argue, John Nyhart, or any living human being, deserves any living honor in perpetuity beyond the longing bounds of their lives. In perpetuity makes John G. Nyhart small and non-competitive. It's ugly. It needs to be changed. And I am quite certain John G. Nyhart, if he were alive today, He'd agree with me in perpetuity. Okay, that said, please visit bowls.com, click on archives, look on the right-hand side way at the bottom, 
and you will see a link for John G. Nyhart. And you can look at some great uh, postcards, see his signature. It's really quite lovely. Very big, talented man, Bancroft, Nebraska. So here is a John Nyhart poem that will also help enlighten our yearning of this discussion. In Autumn, 1926. Drear, dull, autumnal rain, skies washed to gray, winds sighing like an unfleshed ancient pain, uncanny day, a time for tears and musings on the past, for a vain regret, a time to dream of joys that could not last, but mock us yet. A time to dream of winter and to mourn, to hear sad tunes, to yearn unto the far and shadowed born of perished tunes. Nyhart writes a lovely piece, reflectively recalling the memes of Freud in space and time and place succinctly, in rhythm, in cant, rhyming, Lovely perfection in perpetuity. So after we have considered Lauren Isley, Willa Cather, John Nyhart, their definition, their thoughts about yearning, how do we feel? What is the future of yearning? And my take on yearning is this. Yearning is not what is past. Yearning is what is yet to be found. We have been looking at the idea of yearning all these years from the wrong side, upside down, flip-flop, and backward. Yearning is that it isn't of the past or perpetuity. Yearning is of tomorrow and what is yet to come and what shall never be. We are unfulfilled emotionally and psychically, and we cannot go back to what was because we no longer fit. We are smarter and fatter in all the right ways, and so forward is the only path left us in the wise choice of maintaining perpetual motion. And so we yearn for the next, the tomorrow, the wit of the unknown. And just like tomorrow becomes today, a true yearning is never fulfilled. It only gets quenched and tossed in an arc across the back like a cigar stub swollen with spit. We yearn for what we cannot have and what we shall never become. The idealized self, the accomplished id, and the comprehensive sense of a wholesome whole must always remain abstract and out of reach in order to maintain difference, because if definition in realization is achieved, we're either suspended in stasis and rolling backward into eternal nostalgia, or we're dead. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.